Is it going to run? So we're working on creating a working um, proportion calculator in Excel. So I have put in my 300, my number and my X in my confidence interval. Uh, so since we're doing a two-tailed test, <clears throat> I am going to be using uh, 0.95. So what I did for that is I took one minus my confidence interval in order to um, get my values in there. Um, so that's where I'm sitting at right now. And from here, I should be able to calculate my upper and my lower confidence interval. So we have the P hat, which is my P value. And since this is the upper, I do it plus, and then I have my Z score times the square root of P hat times Q hat. And all that's divided by my N. So I should have 0.51. <clears throat> and then my lower is going to be my p hat minus my z score times the square root of my z p hat times q hat divided by my n. And then I close parentheses, and that should give you my lower. And then I will check it real quick to make sure I'm right. Uh, so. When you do this, make sure you put your lower number first and your upper number second. Uh, so we're doing three decimal places. So make sure you change it to, wrong way, three decimal places. There we go. So we're between 0 0.422 and 0 0.511. Yep, that is correct. So here's the thing. We had a uh, random chance says we should get a 0.5% uh, chance, a 50% chance of getting a heads or tails wrong on the coin flip. So what the whole point of all this is, is if this range here, <clears throat> so 0.42 to 0.51, if those numbers include that 50% chance, then the what the person's doing is not better or worse than random chance. So since the confidence interval is, so since the lower confidence interval, interval is below 0.5 here, uh, there's not enough evidence to suggest the touch therapist can select a hand correctly by sensing energy fields. So if those numbers are between, they can't sense it. And this is where it kind of gets weird because uh, the wording, they don't word these the best way. So be aware when you're doing them that it just, it doesn't like to work, right? And of course it says it's incorrect. I hate these. Since the upper confidence interval is above 0.5, there's evidence. See, okay, so. Oh. Sorry, because if there is not enough evidence, that's what I did. So I just chose, I just didn't read it. So just be aware to make sure you read correctly. <clears throat> so as I change these, so like if I'm doing 532 uh, and I get 410 right, I'm looking for 0.999, really high level. And I could tell based just by changing those three numbers, what my values are gonna be. So I will upload this um, <clears throat> as soon as we're done so that you'll have it for uh, this. So, or you could have just you know, done it as I did it. So the next one, someone in once done, is number eight. So this is confidence intervals and upper and lower CI. So uh, this one I is number eight. So I want to develop a new software system. Uh, uh, we need to estimate the number of percentage of computers that use the new operating system. Many new computers must be surveyed in order to be 90% confident. So we need a confidence interval of 90.9. .9. 
Um, oh, so we're going to do uh, an error. So we got three. Oh, so this one, we still have the N, we still have the, or the, the P, we still have the Q. So if you don't know anything, let me look it up. I'm like, sure, on this part, where do I put my stats? Look. Where'd my stats book go? Sorry, the dog was sitting on it. Oh, so sample size from proportion. So I'm gonna, make, gonna look up the formula real quick to make sure I have it. But we do need to know the proportion. Uh, generally speaking, if you don't know anything, you're usually going to do 0.25 or 0.5 for my Q. And there's a reason why. So if I have, um, and I've done this before, but if you multiply those two times each other at all the different ways possible, so like if I do uh, point, uh, zero 0.01, uh, uh, equals one minus this. So if I do this, let's do point 0.1, I don't need point 0.2. But the reason why we do this, and I'll show you real quick, it's actually kind of Trip, at least I always find it interesting. So we're gonna have to find PQ. And the idea is if we don't know, we're doing worst case scenario. Um, whenever we deal with the worst case scenario, we want this PQ to be as big as possible. <clears throat> so as we go up and we go down, the one where it is the worst thing possible is at 0.5 each. Uh, so, uh, sample size portion. So we're gonna when we don't know anything, we always assume 0.5. Okay, portion uh, sampling software. That's for 16. Uh, do, 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 do. Got that one. Got that one. So on um, this one, I'll look it up. Uh, simple size. Give an error. I'll just look it up because the book is not the best on this. So by the way, if you ever want to find a good web page and uh, look it up in something that makes something close to English, because I know math is terrible. Uh, this is actually where I'm getting this from. Uh, Statistics How To is a really good website and it covers a lot of different uh, subjects. So um, they usually can have do something and they'll uh, it ends up being pretty decent. <clears throat> so they have a formula uh, that they use. It is N is equal to Z squared. Oh, did my number, I hit my number lock. Of course I hit my number lock. So we have Z squared times PQ divided by E squared. So in this case, what we do is we take, we find the z-score. So instead of doing it like we did over here, um, what I could do is I could do norm.s.env of this plus 
one minus that. Divide by two. So we get that one. I am to make sure I'm correct. Yep, I am. So that's the z-score. Uh, so we have P and Q, and we have our E at 0 0.003. So our N in this case will be my z-score squared times P times Q divided by my error squared. And it should give me this value right here. On this one, however, uh, instead of using the, the functions that we have over here, you can't have a partial n. The second that you go on this one, you have 0.53. We, you would normally round that up to 752, <clears throat> even if it wasn't a sample size. However, when you actually are doing this, even if it's a 0 0.0001, you always round up. So you can use the round up zero and it gives you your sample size. Now let me check to make sure it's correct because I'm paranoid that way and we are correct. So once we have this, we know that 97% of computers use a new operating system. It automatically calculates this back down to 88. So once you have that, it goes down. So <clears throat> once we have those numbers, the sample size that we have goes down. Uh, no matter which way you go, uh, the worst thing you can have is no idea because you have the largest sample size. And it really does bring it down dramatically, like 700-ish. and it reduces it. It almost always will reduce the sample size. And that's how you do this. So this is how you find the confidence interval. And this is how you find the sample size. And the more information you have on here, the better you get. So that's those two. Does that make sense? Okay, um, like I said, you can either copy it as I did it, <clears throat> or you can upload it yourself. So do, do that's all the information that you need to change. And if you ever go into grad school or you ever have to do research, this thing right here is the most important thing you can do. This test for how many people you have to use in a survey means that uh, if you, like, for instance, if I had to do a, a, a screening and I had to do 700-ish people versus if I had to do not even 100, which of those is going to cost less? So whenever you run this, having an idea, uh, given your error that you can live with, given the confidence interval you can live with, having all this information can help save you significant amounts of time, effort, and sanity. Because if you're a grad student, trust me, you want 88 instead of 780-ish any day. Trust me, I did. I wish I did. I had 6,000, I was not very happy. Uh, what other questions could we have? Uh, what else didn't really work that well? Let me see. Mm, not that one. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? If not, I will just see what else we had. We had a Z-test. or one proportion. So on this one, so this, I don't know what number this is, but this is something else that you have to do. <clears throat> we have P hat or P value. We have a high hypothesis value. We have an N, uh, we have tails. So we can do one or two tails. And then we have sig value. And then test and p value. So, this for this, you're going to have to have these guys are what you don't know. So, let 
And we're going to use the following uh, Sorry, I want to make sure I get this up correct so I can don't make a mistake when I do this. Portion. Sorry. Why did it not do? One proportion Z test. There we go. So on this one, we're going to use the formula. Um, Z is equal to P minus P of naught divided by square root of uh, PQ divided by N. So we are gonna need Q, but we don't have to do that value. <clears throat> so uh, a good example of this is if we guess, like I'm just gonna make a problem off the top of my head. Um, so uh, there's all kinds of tests right now. Like I know somebody had just put out a report on the number of people who had lower symptoms um, when given um, what was it, THC. Uh, so let's say like you do a study, you have 70% of the people who have um, lower symptoms than uh, expected based off a of treatment of THC for, uh, let's call it migraines. Uh, and my hypothesis mean is I'm gonna guess that 50% of people would normally have it based off of placebo. <clears throat> it's one of those things they've probably done a study and I can look it up. That's more or less how many people we have. And I'd say I do a test with a hundred people because I'm lazy and like even numbers. Um, so I wanna test whether or not Okay, so this is uh, the weird thing. We have tails. So what a tail is, is when you have that normal distribution. Let right, me do a new thing real quick. Whiteboard, yes. So a normal distribution like this, you can have either a one tail. So that's either gonna be greater than or less than in your values. So if I'm testing to see if a treatment is better than a placebo, it's gonna be a one tail. So on this case, I wanna know, is it gonna fall like here? Uh, the, when you do a one tail, do you have a better chance of a test being significant because I have a larger margin here. If I do a two tail, there is a difference between the two. Let me actually change that to a different color. So I can do this. And what would end up happening is instead of a wider one like that, you would have, I did not mean to do that, I meant to change to red, something like this, where you'd have a small variable, smaller areas on the left and right side but for instance, if I'm just looking for differences and I don't have a specific question, this may be what you want to do. So how you ask questions depends on what you're kind of get, doing and what you're looking for in this. So that being said, how I ask questions and what I'm looking for will determine if I'm looking for a one-tailed or two-tailed test. In this case, I want a one-tailed test. And let's say I'm, it's medicine, so I want a 99% confidence interval that there's a difference. So Q value is always going to be one minus my P. <clears throat> so my test value is this formula, right? Is this right here? And it's this weird formula. So I wanna do my P value minus my hypothesized. So uh, sorry, I did the wrong thing. Let's see, P naught. So we have equals this minus this divided by the square root of this times this divided by my 100 people. And that gives me my P value. Sorry, that gives me my Z value. And from here, dot S dot dist, 
I can use norm.s.dist. Why is it, wait, norm. Z. And it will be true, I think. Nope, I have the false. I would end up using false, and I get the fact that it is at 0 0.001. So since this is less than this, or I have <coughs> a point, um, sorry, 0 0.01, that's what I want. Since this value is less than this, uh, if so, I this is just me being me. This is less than this. Reject, else fail to reject, and that's just me and how I do it so that I don't ever have to change things. Um, so. Throw the things you could do on this is, I don't have to do that, it's this one. Make sure I didn't do anything weird. So on this one last thing here um, is if this is a two-tailed test, then this needs to be 0 0.005. So what I could do probably be easier. If that is equal to one, this, otherwise, this plus one minus this divided by two. Yes, that. Wait, B17. Oh. Let's go there. Never mind. Messed up. There we go. That doesn't make sense. Why is it doing that? Sorry, I'm trying to make this cute and it failed. One minus. Oh, I know what I did. There we go. One minus point zero zero five. There we go. And then I could change this to B18. And this is just me being cute and doing more than you have to do. You don't have to do that. I just don't like to think. Uh, I do a little bit more work so I don't have to do more work later. And yes, I will upload this so that if you would like to steal it, you're more than welcome to. Um, so and like I said, once you change this, you can figure things out. So um, actually what I'm trying to do right now, okay, so an example of what I was talking about is I have a P of 0.66 and my hypothesize is 0.5. Uh, given a one tail test, I will reject my uh, null hypothesis, leaving the alternative that there is a difference. If I change it to a two-tail test, it fails to reject. So that's why looking at that, when you do that, that's one of the things you kind of want to be careful about, because if you do the wrong one, you're going to have something that is significantly different, but you don't report it. So just pay attention on that. So any questions on those? Let me save this real quick. Four. Um, 
Does anyone have anything else they want me to go over? Because these will help you with most of your homeworks, I do believe. <coughs> Let me get that back up. Does anyone have any questions in general? So let me go ahead and upload. Choose file. Fixed proportion. Questions. The easiest way to get a hold of me is always going to be through Discord because I am always on my phone. And the email for some reason does not send stuff out on my phone and wherever I am, I will have my phone essentially. And if you need another, yes, that's what I have to do. Another link for that. That, and if you need help, you can bug some of my uh, 374 students who are doing calc based stats, so. Come on, once my uh, computer decides to catch up. Why is it? For some reason, Discord is doing weird things. Come on, where's Discord? There's Discord. I don't know why you're doing weird things, but please stop. Give me a second. I have to reload Discord. It it did weird things. <clears throat> so the um that uh, PowerPoint presentation is already uploaded, so you can have that. Um, I'm waiting on Discord to load real quick, and then I will get you a link again. Uh, is there any other questions? Um, your homework, do you have how many of these? You have a total of 31 questions, so it's not nearly as bad as some of the other ones, and you have till... Let me go ahead and pause this because I don't think people 